And now, here is Janet Mefford. Well, the book of Revelation is one of the most sobering and thrilling books in all of Scripture, but it is interesting to note how many Christians today are reading it now with fresh eyes. And perhaps that's because of all the turmoil and terror around us and the increase of lawlessness and the persecution of Christians all across the globe. Could we really be in the trumpet days of Revelation? Well, we're going to talk about it today with Carl Gallops, who is senior pastor at Hickory Hammock Baptist Church in Florida, and the author of the book we're going to be discussing it is called Final Warning. And it is great to have you here, Carl. How are you today? Janet, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. What a joy to be with you. Well, thank you so much. You know, one thing you could probably say today is that there is a lot of fear out there right now about the state of the world. Is that kind of what you're seeing as well? Yeah, well, you know, you said it, uh, you, you hit the nail on the head a moment ago. People are looking at, at, at Scripture with fresh eyes. And I'm telling you, Janet, you, regardless of what people might feel about certain eschatological uh, frameworks and interpretations of the timing of the rapture, regardless of what people may feel about whether or not we might be living in the trumpet days, although my book is written to document the, uh, the to give uh, resources and, and documented facts to, to help people see that we just may very well be. But regardless of all of that, we none of us, I don't think, can deny we are the only generation in the history of the world, Janet, as you know, to see the return of Israel, a 2,500-year-old prophecy written only in the Word of God, only in the Scriptures. It's not, it, it's not recorded in any other religious book of the world. And, and not only that did we see the return of Israel, but Ezekiel 37, for example, is a great example chapter of, of, of that event that would happen in the last days. But then Ezekiel 38 goes on uh, to describe a certain coalition of specific nations given by their tribal names from Genesis to the table, uh, the table of Nations in chapter 10. But in Ezekiel 38, th- there they are, and we discover those nations correlate to modern-day nations that are now totally Islamic, and they are making coalitions to come against an Israel that has now returned to the land. Right. And it's front and center in our news every day, Janet. So So regardless of of people's different schematics of interpretation, I think you're right. I think people are looking at this with fresh eyes. They're, they're, They're watching the evening news. They're aware of those great prophetic passages, the return of Israel, a coalition of nations, a desire to destroy Israel, and we're watching it unfold before our eyes. Yeah, it's almost as if you can't believe what you're seeing. We, we're all just reeling today from what the Islamic State has done to this Jordanian pilot and what Jordan is doing, and, and nations rising up against nations. This is what Jesus talked about in the Olivet yeah. Discourse. But when we talk about the trumpet days of Revelation, you know, Revelation is full of all sorts of things that we keep our eyes on. What about the Antichrist, the rebuilding of the temple, and, yeah. and the beast, and all the rest? How do we focus in on the specific seven trumpet calls and say... We might be near this trumpet or that trumpet. How do you begin to even analyze and exegete those passages in light of what's going on? Thank you. Thank you for asking me that. Well, first of all, I just want to say to your audience, um, let not your heart be troubled. I'm not a sensationalist. I've been a pastor for 28 years, been in the ministry for over 30. I've been preaching, teaching, researching this this uh, information that's in this book for over a quarter of a century, showing it to folks around the world, having it peer-reviewed. I'm not a date setter. I don't run around claiming the sky is falling. I'm a conservative Baptist pastor that has researched and continues to research the scriptures and compare them exegetically against things that are happening in history. So I wanted to say that. Now, how, how do I arrive at the possibility that the trumpets might be unfolding before us right now? Two specific ways. One, straight from the Scriptures, and then another one, uh, juxtaposing the Scriptures upon historical events. Number one, straight from the Scriptures. I look at Revelation 10, 7, and there's, there's a clue given there. John says, And in the days that the seventh trumpet is about to sound, Behold, the mystery of God, as foretold by the prophets, will be fulfilled. Okay, now, think about what John just declared. He said, when that seventh trumpet blows, there is a mystery, a mystery of God. It will be fulfilled, and it was spoken of by the prophets. All right, now, when you go back through the scriptures, there's not a single prophet that speaks to a trumpet blowing that reveals the mystery of God in the last days except for one. One man, one prophet, 
who actually said, Behold, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52, I will tell you the mystery. Mm. We will all be changed in the twinkling of an eye right. at the last trumpet. Right, Paul, right. Now, Paul, of course. Now, now the word mystery is used 20-something times in the Bible, uh, six or seven times in the Old Testament, all of those by Daniel. The rest of them are used in the New Testament. Uh, uh, Jesus uses them a couple times, but not in line with the last days. He's talking about parables. Behold, I speak to you in mysteries. Well, I'll tell you what, hang on just yeah. a moment. We do need to go to a very quick break. We'll come back with Pastor Carl Gallup's his book, Final Warning, Understanding the Trumpet Days of Revelation. We'll return on the Janet Mafford Show. Before we went to the break, Carl, you were talking about the, the different ways that you were kind of looking at yes. uh, whether or not we could be in the trumpet days. And the, one of the ways is you were analyzing Revelation ten seven and this promise about the mystery of God being fulfilled in the days of the seventh trumpet. Yes. I wanted to let you pick things up where you had to leave off there. Yeah, thank you, because this is vitally important to, to this biblical understanding. And so, so yes, John makes that statement in, in chapter 10, verse 7. Uh, Behold, in the final days, in the days of the last trumpet, the mystery of God will be revealed as spoken of through the prophets. And, and, and as I said, uh, if one will do a complete study of the scriptures uh, in you know, electronic concordance, you can do it in seconds now, uh, you'll discover that there's only one prophet, one, one person who spoke of the mystery of God being revealed at a trumpet blast. And of all things, he said it's at the final trumpet. And it's Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52, and he says that that is the rapture of the church. That's the mystery of God, how he was going to rapture out, take out his children before God, before he pours out his wrath. Now, what's interesting is that Paul is the only one who ties that together. Now, mm. somebody would say, well, but Paul wasn't a prophet. Well, excuse me. <laughs> yes, he was. Um, as a matter of fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul said that he was caught up to paradise, to third heaven. Paul lived, Paul died 30 years before John received his revelation on Patmos. So Paul was caught up to the throne room of God, saw the same things John saw, saw the same revelation, if you will, 30 years prior to John. How do we know that? Number one, Paul said it. Number two, we've watched Paul's life and ministry, read, read the, the books and letters that he wrote, and he speaks of end times, he speaks of the Antichrist, he speaks of the terrible times of the last days, he speaks of the rapture of the church, he speaks of trumpets blowing, he speaks of, of the Lord coming back with, and with the resurrected saints and with what kind of bodies they will come. Obviously, Paul was caught up, raptured into the presence of God, given the same visions John was given, but yet Paul said he wasn't allowed to reveal it all. So it's Paul, who was a prophet to the church of the last day's events, I believe that John was speaking of when he said, and, and, and he's the only person you'll find in the scriptures that say anything about a mystery in the seventh trumpet. Now, now some um, uh, people who would object to what I'm saying will say, well, now, Paul didn't say the seventh trumpet. He said the last trumpet, and Paul's talking about another series of trumpets. And what I say to that is, well, no, he didn't say the seventh. He said the last. But we know that not only is the seventh trumpet the last trumpet in the book of Revelation, but it's also the seventh trumpet. It's the last trumpet in that series. But it also happens to be in Revelation 11 when it blows the very last time the word trumpet is even used in the Bible. So it literally is the last trumpet in the Bible. And some people would say, well, Paul was talking about the great trump that blows at the Feast of Atonement, or the last trump that blows at the, at the uh, Feast of Trumpets. Well, that's all interesting, except those terms are not in the Scriptures. Those are rabbinical terms found only in the Talmud from the Orthodox rabbis who added to the Scriptures hundreds of years later. Uh, the Word of God does not contain anything about a great trump or a last trump and, and those prescriptions that the Orthodox rabbis gave. Interesting. Paul yeah. would not have been appealing to outside biblical sources. He would not have been appealing to rabbinical um, traditions. The same, you know, these are the same guys. The rab, you know, the Pharisees are the same guys that Jesus condemned them for nullifying the word of God by twisting the word and adding their traditions. Right. No. Paul was caught up to paradise. Paul saw what John saw. Paul knew about the series of trumpets. John later would elucidate on them and expound upon them. So Paul says, 30 years prior to John, listen, when the last trumpet blows, we're going to be raptured. And that, by the way, is the mystery of God. 
Well, when you get to John 30 years later, he says, let me tell you what a prophet once said. (laughs) The mystery of God is going to be revealed at the last trumpet. And he says, I've been given that same vision. I know all seven of them. And when the seventh trumpet blows, that is the mystery of God being revealed. Wow. Now, when you go back, though, to the other trumpets that are listed there in Revelation 8 through 11, the first one, and people will ask this question, there are some... Uh, very specific things that are mentioned about these trumpets. The first trumpet, uh, upon the first trumpet sound, there's hail and fire mixed with blood that comes to earth. And the second one, a third of the oceans will become blood and things like that. And people will look at this and say, well, we can't possibly be in the trumpet days because these things aren't happening yet. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. First of all, I deal with all of that in my book, and I know this is a quick radio interview, and and, and, and my book is a several-hour read. I deal with all of that. I go into all the details. But let me just give you an example. Uh, Let me go to Trumpet 3, and then I can show you. First of all, you've got to remember, and I talk about this in the book, John was on the island of Patmos 2,000 years ago. They were still riding camels. Okay, walking everywhere they went. He was thrust into our lifetime, Janet, or beyond. So when he's shown things, I mean, how could you describe nuclear bombs going off and nuclear reactors? How could you describe uh, tanks going across the desert by the thousands and jet airplanes and helicopters and and oil wells on fire and world wars and and 9-11 and skyscrapers and cities and interstate highways and automobiles and airplanes and and, and space shuttles? How how would a man riding camels on a rock island 2,000 years ago describe that stuff? Right, right. Yeah, so so obviously he writes in highly symbolic language, but of course with exacting uh, understanding of what's going to happen in the last days. Now let me give you an example. Trumpet number three is where my journey began, because as a young preacher back in the ni- in 1987, I came across a New York Times article, and by the way, I had already believed that the Trumpet days may be for our historical lifetime, and and but but in 1987, the New York Times had an article, a headline article, that said the word wormwood is in the Ukrainian language is equal to the word Chernobyl. Now, oh when, I, <laughs> when, I, when I, my book outlines all this, and I give heavy resources, National Geographic, United Nations documents, scientific journals, I don't go to crazy preacher websites. I mean, all of this stuff is heavily documented. But but one of the things that I, I, I discovered, I took it to my congregation. I said, folks, I don't know. I can't speak Ukrainian. I, I, don't, I can't read a Ukrainian Bible. I don't have access to a Ukrainian dictionary. But this New York Times article says that Ukrainian-born people are saying that that word means this. And I said, look at what Trumpet 3 says. It says that it poisons waters. It kills people. It's like a flaming torch. And the name of it is Chernobyl, if, if you're reading it in Ukraine. So... Anyway, I, I just kind of sloughed it off, showed my folks that, and I said, wow, if this truly is that, we could be living in the trumpet days. Well, 10 years later, 1995, we do have Internet. We do have computers. I'm preaching through it again. I got on the Internet. I had access to a Ukrainian Bible. I had access to a Ukrainian dictionary. I had access to United Nations records where two Ukrainian ambassadors, 11 years apart from each other, one of them became the president of the General Assembly one year. Both of them are documented in United Nations documents giving speeches proclaiming that Wormwood equals Chernobyl in the Ukrainian language. And they all in Ukraine see it. It's in their Bibles. They understand it. They're freaked out by it. Hmm. They realize that it is an exacting fulfillment of the prophecy. And so, and so when I saw that and I began to study it, I thought, well, you know, it says a star fell from heaven flaming like a torch. But then I realized, no, John did not see a literal star because a star is a sun, Janet. You know that. Mm-hmm. It's a sun. Mm-hmm. Well, our sun is one of the smallest known to, to astronomers, and if it were just a few thousand miles closer to us, it would, it would burn the whole Earth up, much less if it fell and hit the Earth. So he wasn't talking about a star. Besides that, he said it was like a flaming torch. I think a star, a sun, would be a little more than a flaming torch. Um, and, then, and then, you know, the other thing to consider is when you get to Trumpet 5, you hear about a star coming from heaven again, and this time the star speaks, and the star is referred to as a he. Right. So we realize that John's not talking about a literal star. He's, he's speaking symbolically. A messenger from heaven says that this happened. Well, and, and people will say, yeah, but nothing on the Chernobyl. It didn't fall from the sky. It blew up. Yes, but my book has all this documented. Actually, what happened? 
the several thousand ton concrete lid when reactor number four exploded. It exploded into millions of pieces of concrete, which all were lit on fire, radioactive fire. It shot over a half a mile into the air and came raining back down upon the earth, polluting the earth, polluting the soil, killing thousands of people, evacuating hundreds of thousands of people. And read the news, read the headlines today, today, 2014, 2015. Chernobyl's still in the news. It's still killing people. People are still radiated. And get this. The sarcophagus that they built over it, 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 it released, Chernobyl released 100 times more radiation than Hiroshima. It is still to this day 10 times more ferocious than Fukushima. And the sarcophagus was designed only to last 20 years. It's now been almost 30 years. It's getting ready to crumble and explode again. National Geographic has done articles on this. And they're in the process of trying to contain it. And guess what happened? Russia attacked Ukraine. Mm, very interesting. Well, now I know we just have a couple of minutes left, and I don't want to miss this point, Carl. So when we look at what is going on all around us, uh, none of us know the day or the hour that Christ will return. But what do you think are the implications of the trumpets of Revelation yes. for us right now? What Thank should you. Christians be focusing upon? Thank you. Well, the illustration I gave of Chernobyl is the lightest of them. If you get into my book, you will see that the other key words like that are astounding and people are going to read it and they're going to say my gosh there's a there's a big chance that we're living in the trumpet days the implications janet excellent question if the seventh trumpet is the rapture of the church and john and paul are in agreement that it is then that means the first six trumpets will blow before the rapture and and my book outlines that it looks as though the first five trumpets have already blown, and which, by the way, they all lead and tie into the sixth trumpet. And guess what the sixth trumpet prophesies? A world war, a massive World War III, centered in the Middle East on the Euphrates River. And I'm telling you, Janet, we're watching this Ezekiel 38 alignment of nations right now. We're watching the rise of Islam. We're watching the explosion of the Middle East. We're watching hundreds of thousands of Christians in the Middle East fleeing for their lives, 50,000 little Middle Eastern Christian children that are orphaned, ISIS cutting off heads, killing people, the nations coming against Israel, nuclear talks between Iran and Russia and the United States and Iran. Israel threatening to blow up Iran, Iran threatening to blow up Israel. It's, I mean, we are at the verge of the possibility of Trump at six. It's right before our eyes, and I fear, Janet, that because so much of this is right before our eyes and squarely in the Word of God and squares directly to historical events, I think it's so surreal that many people are missing it, which is why I wrote the book. Well, I'm telling people, please, we're living in prophetic times. Get your heart right with Jesus regardless of what you think about eschatology. Always, always what we need to be doing. The name of the book, Final Warning, Understanding the Trumpet Days of Revelation. Pastor Carl Gallup's with us. Carl, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you. It's my honor. God bless you, Janet. You too. Thanks for being with us. And we'll be back on the Janet Mufford Show after this.